same time. So, all right, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, okay, so <laughs> little technical difficulties this uh, evening getting started, but um, this is Brian Chirello, and I'm here with Achieve Mo, and um, we are joined today's call with um, Alan. Is it Shalette? Yeah. And uh, Michelle Irwin. <clears throat> Both are from All Wheels Up, an organization that um, dedicates their their time and their mission to um, making uh, or getting planes accessible for wheelchairs. I think, uh, Michelle, you could probably <laughs> explain that a little bit better. So um, we're kind of getting right into a, a conversation. I guess we'll start with you, Michelle. Tell me a little bit or tell our audience a little bit about All Wheels Up um, and how you got started um, you know, on this mission. Absolutely. But first, Brian, I just want to thank you so much for having Alan and I on uh, your live stream show tonight. We're really excited to share with your audience um, all the work that we've been doing in the space of uh, accessible air travel, uh, specifically a wheelchair spot on airplanes. And we'll definitely be happy to share with your audience the other projects that we're working on as well. Um, but yeah, so All Wheels Up is a, is a non-for-profit research organization, and we are the only non-for-profit uh, funding and conducting research for a wheelchair spot on airplanes. So when I say, you know, we're the only organization funding, you know, we, we do that, but uh, in addition to the funding and conducting of crash tests and uh, other projects to um, validate that a wheelchair spot is safe and feasible, um, as well as um, financially possible, um, you know, our advocacy efforts are out there um, trying to pass um, funding for the congressional um, research of a, a wheelchair spot on airplanes. Okay, awesome. I think uh, we may have is Michelle still with us? I'm here, I'm here <laughs> I, 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 there you are. Okay, yeah, you okay. got frozen a little bit again. Um, <laughs> So it's awesome. So you're, you know, obviously there's been, you know, recent stories in the news and so forth about, you know, the airlines, you know, you're, you're in a, a power chair, uh, myself, Alan, you know, we both, you know, we can see that, you know, we're utilizing power chairs on a regular basis. This is how we get around. Our legs don't work for many different reasons. So when you get to an airline, for those people who might be watching that don't understand this, um, they literally, any airline that you're flying on, they literally take you out of your chair, right? And they put you into a, a small manual chair that they wheel into the airplane and, you know, they get you into your seat. Your chair that can weigh a couple hundred pounds is then loaded in the cargo of the plane underneath where all the baggage goes. And that's where there's been a lot of, um, what well, issues where they're breaking chairs. I mean, they're not meant to just go on a conveyor belt and slide into the cargo of an airplane, right? <clears throat> well, you know, exactly, Brian. I, I'm sure Alan can ag agree with this. You know, um, wheelchairs can cost anywhere between 10000 to $78,000. And we wouldn't expect someone to take their vehicle and load it into a cargo plane unsecured. And therein lies, you know, the issue. Uh, you know, this is a va very valuable um, item, cost-wise, but not, not just financial, but to what it means. Oh, do we lose you, Michelle? I think we have a, a, a poor connection with Michelle. So, Alan, can you pick up a little bit from what Michelle was saying, just so we kind of continue? Sorry, guys. Looks like I'm gonna... <clears throat> yeah, so uh, on our website, you can see we have a video of a wheelchair being lifted onto an airplane, and that happened to be my wheelchair when I was going to a conference in D.C. in 2015, and um, you're really putting it all up, um, up, up, to, up to chance because like, even if you prepare with everything ahead of time, like 
something can always go wrong. Right. I'm, I'm uh, actually looking for that, that video. I was going to go ahead and um, try to share it. Alan, where, uh, what, where would I find that video? It would be awesome to share. Uh, give me one second. I'm pulling it up now. Okay. Michelle, you back? Uh, if Michelle can hear us. Can you hear us, Michelle? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You're you're a little. So I'm not really sure. Oh, go ahead. Go um, ahead. I might I might I might pop out of, of this room that I'm in. Maybe it's just where I am located. But um, I I'm not really sure where I popped out of you know connection. Um, but I was just trying to share that you know. The, Wheelchairs are very costly. Uh, we wouldn't expect someone to uh, put onto a cargo plane on stone for transportation. Right. And that's that's a, a huge, um, you yeah, know, it's a huge issue when you have, um, oh, sorry. Um, it's a huge issue when you have a chair that can be, you know, 30, 40, upwards of probably $100,000. Um, and it just gets thrown, you know, not and, and nothing, you know, negative against the guys that um, or girls that are, you know, loading these chairs. It's just it's not the proper way to do it. And they're not given, you know, even at the airlines, they're not given the proper tools to be able to load or unload the chair properly. Um, so laying it down on its side or putting it on its back, they don't realize the amount of damage that they can cause. Um, their mm -hmm. job is just to get it on the conveyor belt and load it up. Right. Yeah. So if you go on our website and uh, click the problem of inaccessible air travel there, you can see the video of my wheelchair getting lifted up uh, onto an airplane. Oh, yeah. So let me go ahead and, uh, and share that uh, that screen with the, uh, the audience here. Uh, we'll share that. And... Uh, and now you can see, here's the, uh, try to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So th this is your actual chair, Alan? Yeah. Okay. And so you can see I put bubble wrap around the droid stick so that doesn't get damaged. Right. So, you know, two guys, I mean, do you, do you happen to know what your chair weighs? Oh, there's a third guy. Um, I think it's three or 400 pounds. Yeah, right. it's a very impressive for them. So I'll lift it up like that. And as you can see, they're still having trouble with three guys. Right. Three guys, they're looking at it. You know, now they're calling in the reinforcement of the fourth guy. Um, you know, and, and they you, you can tell. I mean, it's a it's a struggle. Four guys to try to pick up this chair and, and load it on a conveyor belt. You know, meanwhile, you know, where are you, Alan? You're sitting you know, on the plane, but not in your chair. You don't have the comfortability um, or the support that your chair gives you, right? So now you're going to be on a flight for, you know, who knows how long. And, um, you know, and you're not, you know, you're not as comfortable as you should be. Yeah. And um, so it was my sister that was recording this. I was on this, on the plane. I couldn't even look at it because I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it, it's amazing. So on this particular trip, your chair was was good or um, or did you have any problems? Uh, no, there's no uh, damage or anything. And uh, yeah, it, it arrived great. Um, we took the, the like, like subway in DC, like uh, from um, yeah, from Reagan to our to our hotel. Right. So I, I pulled up another video. This was something that um, saved from a, a previous time. And and here, you know, these are, are two you know guys that are trying to unload the chair, and you can just see the the struggle with it, and then right. boom, right down on the side, you know. I want to I want to call out you know those those wheelchair agents, right? They don't want to purposely damage the wheelchairs. We get it. They're not given the tools to do their job properly. Right. But, you know, 
another thing to call out is, you know, the, the, the stowage handlers, you know, in regards to they're now having to, you know, go out on disability because they threw their back out because they're trying to lift a 300-pound wheelchair with two guys. So, again, you know, trying to, you know, when you look at the big picture savings of a wheelchair spot on airplanes doesn't just come from looking at, uh, you know, are we taking two uh, airplane seats out of an airplane? You have to look at the all-encompassing picture. Right. And, and you know, I wanted to, you know, it would actually probably be good to show um, the video that you guys have on your, on your site. Um, just to explain to people again a little bit of of what we're trying to accomplish, right? I mean, you're you're trying to accomplish the ability for a wheelchair user one to stay in their chair because there's all there's all sorts of levels of disabilities and wheelchair users, and within that, you know, there's some functionality in a wheelchair that will help a person sit up properly. Um, and they may have oxygen or different, you know, um, you know, machinery or, or medical equipment on there that, you know, that they need. So here it's, it's, it's a transfer. So um, I'll show the, the first one here. This is a, a little what well, rendition that you guys have created on a proposed solution. Correct. This is an animation that Alan had uh, done for us. Um, really great work here uh, by Alan and the team. And, you know, this is what the four point tie down system that you would find in, you know, your Oops, I'll play accessible again. Yeah. And, And, um, you know, we put, yes, thank you. We posted this one in 2015 and it was a really great aha moment to just the industry and the wheelchair community in regards to what we were talking about when we said a wheelchair spot on airplanes. This was the initial conversation starter when we brought our idea to Congress and if we could um, pass the FAA Reauthorization Act. Uh, originally, it was the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2016 um, of, you know, the feas to fund a feasibility study for a wheelchair spot on airplanes. Right. And, and that, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of a no-brainer that, you know, you would want to be able to take out a, a you know, a, a particular seat or a section of seats and just be able to, you know, bring in your chair. And like you said, you know, this one has the four point harness. Now, I really like this other one um, that you guys have. Uh, so this one here, I think you can tell me a little bit um, about like this has that easy lock system. Yes, this is the QLK-150 from Q-Strength. And again, Alan and the team did a really great job here, um, really um, getting our, getting out there in video, of, you know, what we, uh, in an animation of, you know, what we were uh, picturing. But, um, you know, we had a, a working group session with all the stakeholders, airlines, um, you know, the aviation industry, and, you know, they were a little unsure about the straps and the four point system. And this, this center full lock system, you know, really gives the airlines um, the things that they're looking for. One, you know, the wheelchair user is responsible for locking themselves in. Um, so there's lack of human error, um, obviously the limited floor space. And we're here just testing what's out there. We're here giving, this is a proof of concept. Um, we've tested this at an uh, FAA approved testing facility. Um, you know, we're here just to, again, prove the feasibility. We're not really making, we're looking to make policy. We're just funding the work that needs to be done and answering those questions from all sides of, so we can get to the end result, which is a wheelchair spot on airplanes and improved accessibility. Right. So, and you know, in your uh, in this particular animation, I mean, you show how somebody can come in from the rear or the front, which means it's very easy for them, you know, for the airlines to designate. Here's a row that could be handicapped, where we can take out a seat or two, put in a seat or two. Obviously, if you're flying, you know, they can, you know, it could be something that you're telling them ahead of time you know, that your wheelchair user, you're going to need, you know, this particular seat. 
and you know i would assume that some of these uh airline seats would be somewhat of a quick release right to to remove so if they had one row in the front where the back of the airplane that was quick release it would allow you know a wheelchair user to pretty much jump on any plane that's that's there right right and here's here again as a as a nonprofit, right we're not um a company that is you know in engineering we just bring the right people together to have the conversation so there's organizations already out there working on what is this going to look like in regards to moving the seats out of the way um and you know in regards to yes we've, we've you know suggested a front row seat or you know a back of the plane just to show them ideas but at the end of the day this will be up to the industry to figure out where is the safest and most um i guess I'm not, i don't know what the word i'm looking for is but you know the right place for the wheelchair spot um on an on an airplane uh where you know alan and i aren't engineers but we're certainly here to help facilitate the conversation um you know we are right now just one of the people who, who have the most information. Um, you know, wheelchair manufacturers don't have aviation experience. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had a temporary uh, shutdown or something. It was a Zoom. Uh, maybe too many people are on Zoom and just shut it down and rebooted. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, I'm not really sure where we left off, but you know what I was saying is, you know, Alan and I aren't the engineers, but you know what we're looking to do is just bring together the right people to have the right conversation. And so, wheelchair manufacturers don't have aviation experience, and the aviation industry doesn't have wheelchair manufacturing experience. And so that's what we're doing is just bringing all of these groups together to talk about, okay, what is what does a wheelchair spot look like on an airplane, and what does that standard need to be? Okay, so so what kind of um, I don't know what, what kind of um, uh, impact have you been met with? Like, if you're speaking to, I mean, you're speaking to companies like Boeing, or are you speaking to like Delta, or a little bit of both? So we we are speaking with everybody. We've had two major working groups, uh, one in 2018 and another one in 2019. At our first working group in 2018, um, we had. Um, Airbus, um, every major U.S. air carrier, Virgin Atlantic, um, Permobile, Quantum Wheelchairs, um, and uh, QStream was our host sponsor. Um, and so, you know, we had a lot of uh, interest. And um, what I'm excited to share is that in 2019, when we had our follow-up working group session after we crash tested the center bolt lock system, we had a 100% increase in attendance. We had organizations like IATA. Um, which is the International Aviation Transportation Authority. Uh, we had Canada Transport, we, um, Boeing, you know, organizations are showing up to have the conversation. I am not saying that they're, you know, that they've signed on to anything. I'm just saying, you know, they're listening to the conversation and they're recognizing that change needs to happen and we're here to help with that change. Okay. And I mean, so has all the feedback that you're getting from these organizations, you know, been positive or do they, do you feel like we're, you're chipping off, uh, you know, progress in the right direction to where you, you think that, you know, it may, yeah, maybe a few years, but this is going to happen or, you know, is there a lot of, uh, I don't want to say politics involved, but, you know, is there a, a lot of stuff that, that they're just saying, you know, this is, you know, near impossible, let's say, to, to uh, you know, get done? Well, I'm going to, I'll start off with the long story to this, Brian. You know, we started this uh, conversation 10 years ago. 10 years ago, uh, I think I was hung up on uh, more times than I can count. I was literally laughed out when I called the crash test facility. And I was told by another uh, advocacy group, I should just shut my company down. I have literally heard it all. I have been dressed down um, publicly, even by the wheelchair community, uh, that this is not going to happen. Um, but I think what Alan and I can t you know, share is we just keep moving forward. We know that this is possible. And we know that this is possible. And why we're so optimistic is our crash test results have been handed over to the National Association of Sciences um, that was funded $700,000 by the U.S. Congress 
to look into a wheelchair spot on airplanes. And that study will be published in August. Uh, that committee uh, has been meeting for the last two years. They had four sessions where they brought together um, stakeholders from the aviation industry. And everybody was really positive. Uh, I, there was only one negative organization, and actually that was a wheelchair manufacturer, um, who actually declined to invite to our working groups. Um, you know, all the organizations, whether they were OEMs, which is the original equipment manufacturers, so, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, seat manufacturers, uh, you know, actual plane manufacturers, everybody had really positive response to what they think, this, you know, the future could look like. The, the great thing is now nobody is really talking about, okay, is it feasible? What the conversation now is, is how are we logistically going to have this happen? So how many planes is this going to be? Like, just like where you're asking, where's the seat going to be? How is somebody going to order a ticket? Uh, so we're on to next step questions, and, and All Wheels Up is constantly there to try to address, address these questions. Um, whether it's articles from uh, medical universities, uh, from physiatry of what's the medical importance uh, for the wheelchair user and the community of why they should fly safely in their wheelchair, to budget impact models, uh, which we just signed a contract with a uh, major university, um, as well as uh, we've been asked by Congress to conduct a mobility study, um, which unfortunately still needs funding. But, you know, we have a lot of projects and and, and we're getting there with answering all of the questions that, that people are asking of us. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's great. I, things like this, uh, you can obviously understand they take time. Um, but, you know, you do have manufacturers like Boeing that it's like, look, you're putting out new planes all the time. So, you know, at some point you draw a line in the sand and say, okay, every new plane is going to get this. Then you can go and try to retrofit, you know, whatever's out there. And I understand that that's not necessarily, you know, your mission is to, to go and get all that done. But, you know, it's it's what needs to be done by the airline industry. Um, and you're right, they do the feasibility studies and, you know, they determine how many wheelchairs they're breaking and what the cost is. Because it does come down to money, but, but it also comes down to life experience um, for, you know, people with disabilities that are using wheelchairs. You know, you shouldn't have to be taken out of your chair, um, have something broke, you get to your destination, and you find out you can't use your chair or you're stuck for hours waiting. So you're impacted by an airline's, you know, inability to, you know, to let you use your chair on the on the plane the right way. Of course. And, you know, um, we have to recognize that, you know, the airline does not intentionally want to break your wheelchair. We need to recognize that. And they are working within the structure that they have now in regards to attending classes and, and um, things like that. And there's the resident AT, AT out there in regards to, you know, creating standards on how uh, assistive devices should be stowed. So they're taking those steps and I recognize, the, you know, the community doesn't think they're the most aggressive steps, um, but that's what, but you know, All Wheels Up has to applaud and I think the community should applaud that the industry has come to our working groups to hear about the work that is being done that is thinking outside of the box for improved accessible air travel. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. it's a, so, like, okay, Alan, I'd Alan. just like to add something. one thing that, um, yeah, it's been the same thing with the FAA, like the FAA, before they were told us it was impossible, there's no way it could be done. Now, like, they know it's possible. We know what needs to be changed to make it a reality, which is just a huge change. Right. And, and you know, Brian, part of the problem is, you know, everybody asks, so well, why should why should a nonprofit be funding the research? And it's a great question. But, you know, we structure ourselves and the mentality is the same as, you know, a cure based found organization. We don't expect the government to find cures for everything either. And we have all of these cure based nonprofits. And so that's what we're doing. We're helping fund the solution for accessible, you know, air travel. And if a nonprofit didn't fund the initial research, we actually wouldn't be having this conversation today. Unfortunately, we're just not as funded as we really need to be. 
um, you know, some of our projects have been stalled for quite a while because we just don't have the funding to to get some of these answers that the aviation industry is looking for to make these aggressive steps forward. Right. Right. And, and you know, I understand. Hey, look, if, if you didn't start this, you know, 10 years ago, um, you know, like you said, I mean, it probably would have never got started, you know. So, you know, should you have to fund it through a nonprofit? No, you probably shouldn't have to. But the government wasn't just going to miraculously, you know, fund it themselves. Um, you know, and so it makes sense of why you start, you know, or yeah, it makes sense why you started it. But getting back to that, I don't know if I missed it in the beginning because you, you were a little broken up, but what made you actually start the nonprofit? Like what drove you to say, hey, you know, I want to start this because why? Sure. Uh, well, I started it because I have a son who uses a wheelchair. I was traveling with him a few years ago, uh, well, 11 years ago, and I honestly could not believe how difficult it was to travel with my very young child who had a very little wheelchair. Um, I was traveling alone. Uh, the flight attendant expected me to leave my son alone on the wheel, uh, on board the plane to go back to the jetway, disassemble the wheelchair. I was holding up the plane, um, and now my son, who is completely floppy, uh, paralyzed, you know, totally immobile, you know, nobody was willing to sit with him, so I had, you know, had begging the flight attendant to sit with him. And I'm coming, getting back on the plane, and I'm literally physically, uh, you know, just sweaty and hot and emotionally exhausted from all of this. And I'm sitting on the plane after I'm watching everybody look at me get back on the plane after I'm holding it up and thinking there's got to be a better way. And I have a wheelchair accessible minivan that my son uses. And I'm thinking why the most technology, technology advanced machine, which is the airplane, is not capable of having a wheelchair spot on airplanes. And so that's when we started All Wheels Up in 2012. Uh, and then I met Alan in 2014. He had a um, social media uh, group called We Want, Access uh, we Want Accessible Planes. And I'll let Alan jump in and he can tell you how you know he got it started. And, and then what we did was we just, we merged our strengths, right? Alan is really great with um, I mean, the, the um social media side and PR and things like that. And I already had the business side of things. So Alan, why don't you share with Brian and, and Brian's followers, you know, how we met and, and how you got started. Yes, I graduated from uh, Bentley University in 2013. And um, then I had an internship throughout the rest of 2013. But then in 2014, um, I, uh, one of my friends overseas, he, was creating a petition to make airplanes accessible. And I teamed up with him and then we created, we want accessible planes. And then we found out what Michelle was doing. And after working together, we decided the best thing to do would be to combine our work. And um, the, uh, the rest is history. And uh, yeah, and, and me and Michelle uh, were a great team. And, and, and I also want to acknowledge it's, it really is all about the community coming together. So, you know, like Alan said, you know, uh, it was, um, you know, a friend of his also from overseas who's a wheelchair user. But I also want to acknowledge um, Vicki Journey Trainer. When we first connected in 2014, Vicki was the creator actually of the initial um, petition that we still now have on our website. And, um, you know, Vicki was just a really great advocate for this and she also really believed this was possible and you know like I said she was an author of that petition which we brought to Congress three times it was a real you know critical piece of the FAA Reauthorization Act getting passed with the visa right, disabilities right. Um, but she's passed but you know I just really wanted to acknowledge you know all of her efforts in this space as well and to, to the followers you know to your followers Brian it's, it's really about everybody coming together and joining it's not just about Alan and I working on this, you know, Alan and I have a really great board and a really great volunteer support system behind us. It's just Alan and I happen to be the ones always talking, but um, it's it's a united effort. Right. It's, you know, power in numbers, right? It's, it's bringing everybody together. 
And, you know, it's very difficult, I think, for people who sometimes don't have a disability or don't have, um, you know, a family member that they're working with that has a disability, you know, really, truly understand the impact, you know, that it takes. I mean, I, I just had a friend of mine come over this past weekend um, and, you know, I've been friends with him for 10, 12 years, but we, you know, we, he, he lives further away, so we don't always get together, but, you know, trying to go out just for the weekend, you know, trying to, you know, go out in a chair with the car, with the, you know, loading and unloading and getting in and out and then going into restaurants or, um, you know, different businesses. Um, we went to a, a place that was outdoors and, you know, my chair got stuck twice and because, you're it was kind of like a little off-road little sand little dirt and you know being here in florida you know chair just sinks down and i'm stuck so now three four guys have to come over to try to pull the chair out you know he told me you know at the end of the weekend he's like you know you really don't realize the impact that it has on someone you know the the, the chair is for for alan for me and so many the chair is or um you know is our legs it's the way we get around it's part of us um so when you take that away, you know, we do kind of feel, you know, alone in a way, you know, you, you, you lose your independence when, when that chair is gone. And if it's broke or, you know, something's wrong with it, well, again, you lose your independence, you know, from that. So being able to, you know, I know I don't fly. I, I haven't flown in probably 10 years because I don't want to get on a plane and have the chair taken away and not know what's going to happen I, I just so i stay within the, the you know 48 continental states and i drive everywhere as, you know i go with my family i just you know i don't want to get on a plane and deal with any any of the stuff that happens when you're flying you know yeah and it's like that for me personally like i said that 2015 that was the last time i flew anywhere i missed like i missed my sister's wedding i missed the weddings some of my cousins and other friends and family members and um yeah like um me and michelle have a great team because i work remotely but she was saying in one of our recent interviews that um yeah people are always ask me where's alan oh when can i meet him and just like you know I, i'm doing it all from home right right so, you know, and, and it's not like we're asking, you know, uh, Richard Branson to, you know, get us a uh, easy lock on, you know, the next space mission, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're simply saying, hey, you know, you allow us on regular domestic flights without, you know, within the United States, that would be a great starting point. Um, so, so Michelle, what's, what's next for, you know, all wheels up? Where, where are you guys headed? Where, where, where's your, your next big thing happening? Yeah, we have a lot of great projects, Brian. I'm happy to share with you everything that we're working on. You know, I, I love that about this organization. We're very transparent uh, where we, you know, where we can be. Um, so what we really need is the TRB report to be published from Congress uh, this August. Uh, so next month, uh, we will be having a meeting with SAE, which is the uh, standard or, uh, standards organization. They create the standards um, for anything from automobiles to airplanes and uh, then we're looking for standards to be created for the crash testing standards, when I say standards, for the locking systems for the wheelchair and the wheelchair uh, itself. And then the organizations like a permobile, quantum, Q-strain, um, can all go into R&D on, uh, and they have to go into R&D on, you know, a, a device specifically for aerospace purposes. Um, so we're, you know, we're really close to, to the engineering side of next steps. Um, like I said, um, projects that are ongoing right now, we have a budget impact model uh, going on right now. We're really excited about that. Um, we have, um, right now we actually have a, a fellow from SNU, Southern Methodist University, right here in Texas. Um, he's doing really great work um, advocating for us in Washington, uh, Washington D.C. Um, so we're, we're advocating, and Alan, I'll let Alan tell you all about the ACAAA. Um, but the other uh, thing that we are working on is um, evacuations. And so we are advocating for uh, evacuations of people with disabilities and having their uh, a true process and an SOP 
um, on airplanes. There really isn't a process um, if you're if you have a disability. Um, you know, you right. you technically really are an afterthought and left behind. Um, there, there is not anything. You know, there is no crew on board for say the flight attendant to help get you off that airplane safely. So. Uh, right now, uh, we launched in January the Fly Safe Today program, where All Wheels Up provides for free the ADAPTS um, evacuation slings. So, unfortunately, you have to think of your own evacuation plan. So, we're going to provide it free for you, um, and we're also providing the Special Cares Harness, which is the adult harness uh, for people with disabilities uh, to. Um, they put it over the um, airplane seat and it secures you into the airplane seat if you don't have upper uh, torso um, strength or mobility. So it's a four point system that attaches to the seat belt. Um, and so we've heard of many wheelchair users having to bring rope, and, you know, their bathroom clothes straps, and anything they can find in their homes to help them stay seated, um, especially during takeoff and landing and the whole flight. So, so we're providing the tools for you to travel safely. Right. No, that, that's uh, incredible. That's awesome because yeah, you're right. There's there's a lot of people that just bring all different kinds of things that will work for them or they hope will work because when you get there, you, you don't like you, you know you're out of your chair, which gives you all of the support that you need. So now you go into an airplane and everybody who's flown on an airplane knows those seats are horrible. So how how is someone who doesn't have motor function or you know muscle um, ability to sit there properly? You know how do you maintain that? And uh, you know I've seen guys bring booster seats you know in, into the the plane and and those kind of things. And again, you know it's not you know it's somewhat embarrassing I think for for some of us who are disabled to to have to go through all of that. And then. You know, it's just not as comfortable. So you're literally on a plane for five hours, and you, you could be in pain or whatever, and and then you get off the plane to find out they broke your chair. And it's, you know, the, the chair is on the plane. It's not like it's being left behind. So why not just let it sit with you versus underneath in the cargo, or or you know, put me underneath in the cargo area? I'm fine down there. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> so. But yeah, like. We we're talking about the person. For me, when I flew from Boston to DC, that was like a 45 uh, minute flight, I think. But like, I had to take the person off my wheelchair, put it on the one there, and like, I barely survived the 45 minutes without like, like my butt being in pain. And um, yeah, I had to have my mom hold me like during takeoffs and landing just because I didn't have the trunk support. Right. Right, there, there are things that that people just don't they don't understand, you know, until they're until they're literally in, in the same position, and many of them will never be there. Yeah, and there's some things that are words like um, we hear all the time about people when they travel, they just don't drink, they don't eat that day, so they don't have to worry about going to the bathroom. And it's like no, like able-bodied people would never have to deal with something like that. Right. Yeah, so Alan, why don't you tell Brian about the work that we're, you know, supporting with the uh, ACAA? A. Yeah, so the ACAA is the Air Carrier Access Amendments Act, and it's um, created by Senator Baldwin and Representative Langevin. And um, one of the things it's going to do is require new planes to have less accessibility uh, barriers. It's going to increase some of the fines for the violations and stuff, but we think it's going to make a big difference because um, one of the previous pieces of the legislation that we helped pass was an amendment in 2018 that required like the airlines to report how many wheelchairs they break or damage. And since that uh, 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 was enacted, like it's changed a lot of stuff for us like now we have their number and how many wheelchairs are broken and um yeah we we're asking everyone to write their representatives about it um it's getting right. some momentum but yeah we think if it's signed into law it's make a big difference yeah absolutely so the acaa 
that currently exists today was written actually four years before the ADA. And the question that we always get is, why doesn't the ADA cover air travel? And it's because the ACAA was in existence before the ADA. And, and now the ADA, um, I'm sorry, the ACAA is, is out there to kind of, you know, give a little bit of an update and broaden the scope of um, air carriers and, and, you know, what they can have to do for accommodating people with disabilities. All wheels up would love to see the actual wording of wheelchair spot on airplanes. I don't know if we'll have that happen, but there's a very broad stroke saying that airplanes need to be accessible. And so we're really hoping that we, you know, that that will make the impact that is needed. But we're asking your followers and all of our followers to write their representatives, let them know that this amendment is really important to them. And if you specifically want a wheelchair spot um, specifically added to the legislation, tell them that and tell them why it's important to you. Um, we really need to get uh, some, some real support behind this or we're going to go another five years before we see any additional legislation for accessible air travel made. Right. Yeah, I mean, and when you really step back and, and think about it, I mean, what other, you know, call it mass transit type of, um, uh, you know, uh, vehicles out there, applications out there are not handicap accessible. I mean, if you look at, you know, at a train, if you look at an Amtrak train, you roll right on with your chair. If you look at, uh, you know, a subway, you, you know, you roll right on with your chair. I know in Philly, they used to have the L's up on, you know, their elevated uh, trains. But again, you can add elevators and you can get onto the train. Um, you know, so, you know, everything else that you look at is kind of accessible. Um, you know, even mass transit, you know, if there's vehicles, buses, you know, whatever. So really, I mean, are like in, in your opinion, are, are planes the only thing that really are not accessible at this time, you know, in terms of a larger mass travel type of vehicle? Yes, absolutely. Because the ADA uh, mandated that all transportation needed to be accessible, air travel is the only transportation right now that is um, unaccessible. Um, and so we are also working to try to educate um, stakeholders that are working the Uber Elevate, uh, or not, sorry, the Urban Elevate uh, projects in regards to um, those uh, new, I guess, um, they're not helicopters, they're not planes, but they're the Elevate, so they'll, you know, transportations from, uh, to the airports to, say, the suburbs um, that, that or, um, you know, organizations are working on. We're trying to educate them that, you know, you're a new in industry and to not forget about the disability community and have access, you know, wheelchair accessibility from the start. So it doesn't have to be all this work um, on the back end to have to be accessible. Right. Right. No, that's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. And, and the only reason the, the planes weren't is because of this ACAA that was actually started prior to the ADA. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So, yeah, yeah, but also I'd like to add one thing, which um, we, we used to talk about um, much more, but like the Air Force One for FDR was made accessible for him. It had an elevator uh, that is wheelchair. It could, it could use like and everything and that was you know in the 1940s right the technology definitely exists the, there's no reason why they can't get a wheelchair on a plane and i think it's amazing that you're you know you you're facilitating some of the crash tests um you know with it and and that makes sense you know whether you have the four point harness or the easy lock system both things that are what approved on on motor vehicles right and other transportation um you know vehicles so you know to do that on the plane that's it makes sense um obviously a plane you can have the turbulence and all those things but you know if a plane actually unfortunately went down and crashed well to a disabled person you know, we're pretty much going to be stuck in the chair anyway. I mean, you, you know, you, you, I know you have the uh, evacuation harnesses, so but that's going to be uh, something utilized with other people who are going to have to help you. 
but whether we're in a chair on the plane or we're just like, you know, our, our uh, wheelchair on the plane or you're in an airplane chair, either way, we're stuck in the chair. It's, we're not getting up, you know, and evacuating on, you know, one of those shoots that they have. Somebody's going to have to help us. Um, so, you know, I think that, that, you know, I agree with you guys. The technology is there to be able to support this. Um, it really probably comes down to dollars, you know, money. And, and, and unfortunately, that's where I think you need the government involved to mandate that it has to be done. And then the airline carriers will say, OK, you know, and they'll decide to eat the, the cost of whatever it may be. Right. And, and you know, Brian, I, I don't think an airline is going to be, quote unquote, eating any cost. You know, um, if we look at uh, just one wheelchair user who's had a bad experience and will Uh-oh. It's damaged, right? Okay. Um, you know, they got a bunch of spot. Yep. Michelle's freezing up again, Alan. <laughs> um, but an airline oh. is issuing a voucher for... Yes. Am I here? Can you... Yeah, you're you're um, you're freezing up a little bit, but I think I know the you know the story that you're you're trying to tell is a, a, about most recently uh, one of the, the disabled people in our community. You know, flew. They broke his chair. They're they're you know they paid for the repair on the chair. You know, out of their pocket. I think they gave them the air the the uh, flight for free, and then they gave them another voucher to go use somewhere else. So I, yeah, I, I think. You know, you're right. They may not be, uh, they may not be out of pocket any money because here they have to fix and and compensate people um, whose chairs they break. And and I was watching a, a news article um, or a video right before the call here, and I think they said something like, you know, eight to nine thousand chairs per year are being damaged or broken or something. And and that number may not be super accurate but that was it was reported on that could have been a single airline or that may be all of them um you know aggregated together but but still if you're breaking eight thousand chairs a, a year that's eight thousand people that are impacted who are disabled who already have a hard enough time doing things and yet you're just going to go make it more difficult on them well we have the actual numbers here and one of the articles from the western post that interviewed us uh, they found out that the first full year of reporting, um, like 10,548 wheelchairs and scooters were lost, damaged, laid, or stolen. And that's 29 a day. Wow. Yeah, I don't even want to think about uh, lost or stolen. I mean, you know, I know there's there's um, uh, connecting flights, and, and I have heard stories of that, right? You're going, you know, I'm in Orlando, so you're flying to, uh, let's say California, you have a connecting flight in Dallas and you get to California and your your chair is with your luggage on another flight to, you know, New Jersey. Like, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> and, it's, you know, it's not funny, but what do you do, you know? And, you know, Brian, back to your, you know, like your comment that, you know, airlines, you know, are going to have to eat the cost of a wheelchair spot. One airline... Um, in 2016, spent $2.6 million on wheelchairs, repairs, and replacements. Wow. So, and that actually, that number actually doubled in eight years. So, and it has the potential to double again in the next five to eight years. So, you know, that's why I think we're starting to have real robust di dialogue because if the organizations, the airlines are really looking at this, they're actually spending too much money. Um, not taking into consideration the the wheelchair community and what can be done as a solution. Right. And, and when you really think about it, you know, maybe it doesn't cost them anything in terms of, you know, if you're if you're uh, an airline, you're buying your plane from Boeing it, or, you know, another manufacturer, you know, it's it's Boeing that, you know, needs to put it into the, you know, put the solution into the plane. And, and realistically, I mean, you're building a whole plane, adding an easy lock and a couple removable seats. 
shouldn't cost, you know, two point one million dollars or some crazy amount, you know, like that to to do it. You know, it it almost would be baked into the cost of, you know, this huge plane that they're making. And you know, and then every airline would just have it. So now when you book your ticket, that's probably the the more they have to work on the airlines, right? When you're booking your ticket, knowing that, you know, okay, Alan's coming on board. He has a wheelchair. He has the easy lock pin. Okay. We know how we're going to do all of that. Right. And there's organizations actually that we're working with that have um, created, uh, you know, the logistic solutions. So, you know, these were conversations that came up in our working group and then organizations who were there listening, you know, have teams working on that. So, um, they're definitely being addressed and like that's what the working group sessions are for is to throw out the questions and then you know does somebody want to take on their project whether it be an all wheels up taking on their project or an oem sitting in the room which in that in that particular case they did so um we're we're definitely ha- you know addressing a lot of the questions that you're that you're asking Brian. you're right it's you know what's really great is you know after we prove that a wheelchair spot could be possible the next question is in the meeting, we're like, okay, great, you know, let's talk about the logistics. And I thought that was really fantastic and really refreshing that, you know, we could actually talk about next steps with the industry. Right, right. No, that's awesome. Yeah, and I'd just like to add that, like, we're really trying to help build the disabled travel industry, and we spend, like, a good amount. I, the numbers here from, like, an open doors, like, the organization we work with, they had a report that um that in 2018 2019 more than 27 million travelers with disabilities took 81 million trips and so they spent 58.7 billion dollars and that's up from 34.6 in 2015 so it really is growing big Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, those numbers are staggering. I mean, it, it should be a no-brainer for an airline. And if you think about it, most people, like you said, you know, Ron, you don't travel, and All Wheels Up did a survey, and many of the wheelchair users that, you know, we surveyed don't travel. Almost 80% of the wheelchair community doesn't travel, and these numbers are growing that much with a community that's not even traveling. So if you think about if we, the wheelchair community actually had a wheelchair spot, just think of how much more the tr- those numbers could grow. And also, you know, you, Brian, are not going to travel by yourself, right? So it's not just one ticket because Brian can now travel. It's right. Brian and his family can travel. So the airlines are now gaining three more tickets because this whole family is going to be coming with them on his trip to California. Right. Right. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I mean, so, uh, you, you know, my wife, my daughter, they're not traveling on planes because I won't go. So we all jump in the car and we drive because that's what makes sense for us. If they do, you know, if, if they did allow the, the chairs to get right on the planes, I'd be much more, you know, um, willing to say, OK, let's fly to Vegas or California. Let's go places because you do. You want to get out and you want to see places that I'm not willing to drive, you know, drive to, um, you know, so they are, they're missing out on, on a lot. And, uh, and I do believe, you know, especially the numbers that Alan was saying, I mean, uh, they have the potential to, to definitely increase it. Um, you know, and then and I just, I, it, you know, it's, it's a shame because in the medical community here, like dealing with disabilities, I've learned so much since, you know, I've, you know, deteriorated in, in my, you know, with my disease, but you learn that everything's 10 times the cost when it comes to some kind of medical related item, device, whatever it may be. Um, you know, here's something that airlines I think can do along with the manufacturers, probably wouldn't have a huge cost to them to do it and would improve, you know, many, many people's lives and increase, like you said, the amount of travel that we do. Exactly. I, I think the ROI on it, which is what we're trying to prove, is actually going to be cost beneficial versus cost negative. Right. I, I, I agree with you with that 100 <laughs> percent. We're, we're on the same page. Alan, get them to get it done. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, we're, we're um, yeah, we really think it's going to help tourism in general. And like you said, you're from Florida, Florida, like so much of their economy depends 
on tourism. So like, it, it could help a lot. Absolutely. The amount of people, especially disabled people, um, disabled children that come to Orlando for Disney, for Universal, SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, all the parks that are here. I mean, it's, you know, it's a one stop playground for, you know, for kids. And, um, you know, and there's a lot of uh, uh, nonprofits down here that work with, you know, kids as well. But, yeah, they all have to either fly or they have to drive. And. I guarantee if they're within driving distance, they're probably driving, you know? Exactly. I mean, and we would love the support of Disney or Universal um, because that, you know, it's really interesting uh, conversation that Alan and I always pitch is that, you know, from New York to Orlando would be the first test, the test room because of how many kids uh, do make wish and want to go to go to Disney. Right. Right. No, that's it's awesome. Yeah, and the thing with Disney is like, it's all accessible, David. It's the wheelchair accessible rides, wheelchair accessible hotels, and um, yeah, the bus that picks it up from the airport to Disney, that's accessible as well. Right, everything they do is, is accessible, which makes it that much easier to, you know, to go and, and enjoy your, your time there because you're, you know, as long as you got there with your chair safe and sound, then you know you can pretty much do almost anything at disney without being impacted because you're in a chair you know and you do experience you know some of the rides and you experience a lot of what goes on there um all from the comfort you know of your chair you know so all right guys well you know um just in closing i'm, I'm gonna wrap up i'll show up um i'll show some of your website um in a moment here but just want to see if there's anything else you guys you know, would like to add before we uh, wrap things up here? Absolutely. Um, well, I have two things. We are um, actually actively looking for some new board members. We have some positions. So if this is, you know, something that you are interested in, please contact us. Um, we definitely see, you know, should tell you what's available or if it's even outside of what's available, you can join a committee. Um, and we're also looking for volunteers. And the other thing is, um, in August, we are having our first inaugural um, virtual run. We're really excited about that. And it's um, a virtual run in recognition of Aviation um, Day, um, recognizing all of the great things that the aviation, has, aviation industry has done to date. And uh, we are recognizing that we're going to be a part of that future. Um, um, so you can uh, go to our website or our social media and find that link and you can register to run and you're going to get a beautiful medal. Sorry, I don't have it in this room with me. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you froze again. <laughs> she, yeah, I, um, she did that on purpose. She's like, I, 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 <laughs> um, but Alan is going to post those pictures. Okay. Yeah. And I'd just like to add, like, uh, people can donate to us at allwheelsup.org or facebook.com slash allwheelsup, Instagram, Twitter, we're all on those. And every donation really helps us fund uh, more research projects. Yeah, no, that's, um, uh, that's awesome. So here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, let's see here. I'm going to share... Um, the the website uh, again here just so everybody can see um, so the uh, th this year website go to allwheelsup.org um, and you'll find the all wheels up uh, website uh, it's a great website it has a ton of information along with the videos that um, that we played earlier along with uh, all of their social media um, sites so please go ahead and go over to all wheels up and follow them um, if you want to participate, Did, where's the, um, Michelle, do you know where the sign up is on your site for the virtual run? Sorry, I don't manage. <laughs> but yeah, you said on our Facebook page, it's pinned uh, at the top. Oh, okay. Over, uh, go over to the, uh, Facebook page. Let, let's see here. Uh, let me, uh, come on. All right, go over to the all the facebook.com slash all yeah, wheels right up there. and um, uh, follow them. Give them a like. Make sure you're following them and um, and you'll get all the information on oh right here on the virtual uh, walk so you can sign up here. 
Um, and if you guys want to help contribute to their, uh, they have a store. If you want some merchandise, um, this is where AchieveMo uh, also helps out. Um, it'll their storefront comes over to the AchieveMo uh, site, and um, that's that's what I run. So if you guys want to support them through products, uh, we make a lot of handcrafted. Uh, different types of products that you can buy and uh, just show your support, give it as a gift, um, drink your coffee every morning out of uh, 12 coffee mugs by 12. <laughs> so, um, all right. I mean, guys, I let's let me stop sharing so I can see your faces again. Um, there we are. Where's Michelle? She disappeared. Do you see her, Alan? <laughs> no, I don't see her. <laughs> she left us. Um, all right. I mean, I just, you know, hopefully she'll come back. Oh, there she is. <laughs> all right. Just, uh, you know, just wrapping up. I, I appreciate your guys' time today. I appreciate you coming on, talking about All Wheels Up. I've learned, I actually learned quite a bit about the, uh, not only the organization, but um, I didn't realize you were doing it for, you know, 10, 11 years and, you know, it's a it's a huge push. So I learned a lot. I hope that uh, our our viewers have learned, and this will be recorded, obviously, and then put out on um, YouTube and Facebook and different areas. So you know, hopefully, somebody watching this in the future will still go ahead and um, you know sign up, follow you guys, buy some merchandise, you know, and help support you guys. So. Thank you, Thanks, yeah, thanks again. So I appreciate you guys have a, a good evening and, uh, and we'll talk again.